So NVIDIA's Project Beyond Marketing is now definitely confirming Ada Lovelace uh, GPU architecture. I feel like my head's too big out of the way. Ah, eh, here. Uh, because we've got, again, this Project Beyond thing coming up. So this should be the big reveal of the next generation of gaming GPUs. These are the uh, papers published by Ada Lovelace, who this next gaming architecture is named after. There's also this little um, sticky note on the computer screen with apparently some numbers on it. I couldn't see it in the video on that tweet, but apparently there's higher res images out there. And people speculating on what these numbers might mean. There's all sorts of speculation. One is that 7538 could be uh, referencing the fact that um, Copite, for example, people leaking facts about uh, you know, how many transistors does AD102 have, the Ada Lovelace uh, top-end GPU? And apparently the answer is uh, between 70 and 80 billion. So could this be like a 75 billion transistors? Could it be nothing? Who the heck knows? Now the other numbers it's being uh, reported uh, could be that the 629 is could be the size of the die at 629 millimeters squared. And the 208, people aren't too sure about, but uh, some people would at least want to believe that it could be 2.08 times the performance of the previous generation. I suppose we shall see. Now, uh, Video Cards has... Uh, kind of summarized some of their own sources as well as various uh, Twitter leaks and um, other leaks on chip hell forums and things like that to try to pull together what we know about the specs that sh should be coming out uh, with this announcement and the initial wave of graphics cards. And they're seeing the RTX 4090. We are definitely expecting the 24 gigabytes of memory, uh, but they're saying the boost clock should go up to 2520 megahertz. And they're saying that the board power will probably be set at a TGP of 450 watts, but it's possible that the BIOS would allow it to go up to a configuration of 660 watts. And so that would explain the rumors of where we saw these massive numbers. I'm not saying 450 watts is low, um, but the actual, again, default configurations of the power could be lower than some people were initially uh, scared of here. Now again, it's looking like the RTX 4080 will be coming in a 16 gigabyte and a 12 gigabyte version, and that the um, initial 4070 announcement appears to have been scrapped. Um, I, there's some speculation on whether the 4070 was, you, you know, renamed as a 4080 12 gigabyte, uh, maybe to keep prices high, um, to keep, you know, help with sales of the 30 series, which, uh, you know, all reports say they still need to clear a lot of stock on. Um, so if they name it a 4080, you know, then they can justify, you know, at least by name, you know, higher pricing tiers and things like that. It's looking like the 16 gigabyte 4080 is reported to have um, uh, 9,728 CUDA cores as compared to the 4090's 16,384 CUDA cores. So it's looking like we'll see a much larger gap between the 90 series and the 80 series than we saw last generation with clock speeds here around 2,505 megahertz. And um, 16 gigabytes of GDDR6X at 23 gigabits per second, which is interestingly faster than the 21 gigabit per second uh, that we're seeing here on the um, 4090 leaked specs here. Again, if all these uh, turn out to be true, all based on leaks and rumors, with the TGP set to 340 watts at its default, but again, it could be modified up to 516 watts as a maximum power limit. But again, at 340 watts at its default configuration would again be a lot more reasonable, although certainly not low power by any means. And the 4080 12 gigabyte uh, would be coming in with 7,680 CUDA cores, so a noticeable gap between these two models, uh, given that they'd both be being called a 4080. This wouldn't be quite as big of a deal if that was called a 4070, um, but certainly looking like uh, some you know, downgrade here, although with the clock speeds going higher, you know, that could make up some of the gap, but definitely not all of it. And again, they're saying 12 gigabytes at the 21 gigabit per second speed. And the TGP here at 285 watt configuration, 
but possible to go up to 366 watts. And again, they're mentioning that the 4070 is not listed and the AIB board partners that apparently video cards have talked to say they don't expect this to change as we are only a few days out now from the announcement uh, from uh, NVIDIA. Now we are seeing a bunch of leaked photos of RTX 4090 uh, graphics cards and packaging which is interesting. So it certainly does look like these are right on the horizon. This one looks like it might be a Lenovo PC with a Lenovo branded one. They did blur this out, but there is a 90 there. So this, uh, I mean, it could still maybe be some, some kind of hidden 3090 or something like that. <laughs> um, and with some die shots released of that one as well. And a, a Galax GPU with four fans coming in here would again be being speculated as an RTX 4090. Now these all look absolutely massive and that could explain this tweet from uh, an AMD uh, gaming marketing director who's saying bigger doesn't necessarily mean better. Now this is completely out of context so uh, could mean anything but a lot of people are taking it as a reference to the massive size of the RTX 4090. Now, does that mean that AMD will be coming in with smaller GPUs, with uh, maybe not launching their, you know, 90 class first, you know, 900 class first? Who knows exactly? But uh, Igor's lab, or Igor's lab might be how I'm supposed to pronounce that, anyway, has said that he's taken a whole bunch of information that he has about RX 7900 XT uh, board designs. And while they all can be a little bit different and he doesn't want to release the exact photocopies of his leaks uh, for privacy reasons for his sources and all of that, um, he's put together a drawing, a board design here with some information uh, that covers, you know, the stuff that seems pretty common between the uh, various board designs, things like that. And he is claiming that uh, those who remember his drawings of the Turing and Ampere generations, they ended up being almost photographically accurate. Now, I do remember a bit of that, but I don't remember the details well enough to confirm the photographic accuracy of it. Um, but Igor's Lab does tend to be a good high quality source when he uh, releases some info on things. So this is the overall uh, picture we've got of it. And if we zoom out a bit and take a look at some of the facts that he's claiming, he's saying that this has the six MCD chiplets and one GCD chiplet. So that's the memory, there's six memory, you know, type chiplet things, but the actual graphics core um, is, is one chip. And then uh, the uh, 12 gigabyte GDR6 modules, there's 12 modules used, which would suggest that the memory would go up to 24 gigabytes if those are two gigabyte modules. And um, he, he's going into the different power designs and things like that and the power connector. You could look at some of those details yourself. Uh, one thing he's saying that he's leaving it at, a, um, f at three eight pin connectors rather than the newer uh, uh, PCIe 5.0 connector. And he's saying he's leaving it open whether that would come onto those cards. But if it is the three six plus two uh, connectors, that would limit the maximum board power to 450 watts. And if that's the maximum board power, the actual total board power um, should come in you know, significantly below that. So then if we compare that to what we were seeing from the, uh, I gotta find the right slide, uh, the power draws available from uh, the NVIDIA camp where we're seeing that, you know, we might be seeing the actual 450 watt TGP with the, with the you know, maximum configuration going up into the 600 watt range. It is looking like if this is accurate, um, Igor's lab at least is thinking that the 7900 XT will have a lower power draw than at least the 4090. And I wonder if it would be more of a 4080 competitor, at least on power draw. We'll see how it does in terms of performance because it looks like we are not seeing a lot of performance rumors here. Now in other AMD news, um, we are seeing them uh, planning to showcase the B650 and B650E motherboards on October 4th. Uh, remember, we'll be getting this next generation of Ryzen 7000 CPUs 
uh, very, very soon here, but their um, initial boards, I think, will be the more ex expensive uh, uh, 670 class. So we're going to see more about the 650 class here on October 4th. And if you need a quick reminder of the difference between the various configurations here, um, the XX70E, the XX70, B650E, and B650 will all be available with some differences, although some of them are like, you know, the E guarantees certain th things. I don't know, guys. It, it's a little bit confusing. I'm not sure I like how they've segmented this. Anyway... Uh, AMD apparently already has next-gen Ryzen Phoenix CPUs with the Xilinx, am I pronouncing that right? AI engine, because remember uh, a while back AMD had a major purchase of this company uh, to get in the AI engine going, and this is apparently running in the labs according to a tweet from David Shore. Some interesting updates. Victor Peng says Ryzen client chips with Xilinx AI engine are back from the fab and running in the lab. So it'll be interesting to see how that ends up working out for us. Now, Ethereum has finally actually hit the proof of stake. Proof of stake is such a big deal because a massive reason why uh, GPUs were so expensive last generation is because of Ethereum mining. And so Ethereum going to proof of stake means that it can no longer be mined on GPUs. However, there are, you know... I think some splits off of this currency into versions that could still be mineable, but as of now, I think the um, the relative price of those currencies is low. So unless it spikes, you know, this should see a not only a, a hopeful flood of used GPUs to to you know bring down prices, but um, also this would hopefully mean that this next launch of new GPUs won't have the same kind of pricing issues. There's always going to be initial sellouts, and there's always going to be some scalping and things for the first few months. But in a normal market that doesn't continue for a year and more, um, in a normal market that would just happen with the initial few months around launch. Now, um, according to uh, the, uh, is this the founder or, or whatever <laughs> of... Uh, of um, Ethereum, uh, he's claiming that this should reduce worldwide electricity consumption by 0.2%. And while 0.2% isn't a big percent, when you're talking about percent of worldwide electricity consumption, that is absolutely insane. When you think about how much energy was being put into GPUs mining Ethereum, if we're talking 0.2% per, of worldwide <laughs> electricity. Absolutely crazy. Anyway, we've seen a few price drops already, although it's unclear whether they're tied to this proof of stake. I've posted some things on my community page, and I will definitely continue to monitor that and keep an eye on you know, eBay and the like if you're willing to buy used um, as people maybe clear out their mining stock. Now, the uh, last thing I want to mention is that Digital Foundry has done an amazing comparison of, of Intel's XESS upscaling, uh, comparing it to DLSS and native, primarily focusing on Shadow of the Tomb Raider. But uh, they're incredibly thorough, looking at all of the major places that you could see issues pop up with this type of upscaling. Um, and I just highly recommend checking out this video. Uh, the overall impression I got from it uh, is that overall it's very, very good, but certain things like hair is sometimes rendered uh, a little bit more pixelated. Um, there's also when there's uh, a lot of textures on things with repeating patterns, you'll get a bit of a, a hey, you know, I don't know the right word for it, a, a fringing to the image. Um, so it's definitely not quite DLSS level, but it looks very good. And this is a long video. It's almost a half hour long, but I highly recommend watching it if you're at all interested in XCSS and just upscaling in general and seeing its pros and cons versus native rendering. This was really fascinating. And also, I do want to bring up, they mentioned this at the beginning of the video, but I think some people might miss it, that uh, the fallback support when XCSS is running on non-Intel GPUs will not apparently look quite this good. It looks like there is some image quality concessions to that. Um, 
Uh, I, I don't know if I can find the exact slide where they mention it here, but there's definitely a mention that the, um, yeah, the, the fallback support might not look quite as good, but that wasn't really tested in this video. So we'll need to see future coverage of that. And I hope that, you know, Digital Foundry does that because they're, uh, I think, really the best at doing these types of comparisons. I hope all of you have an excellent day.